what is up guys welcome back to the ford type make you loco channel uh so today we're going to talk about a real common occurrence and a real issue that ford's having right now with all their four cylinder ecoboost engines doesn't matter what year it seems they all have problems with coolant consumption and cracks in the block all right lots and lots of issues between cylinders two and three on there so this one right here, for example, is a really good example of how it's going to look. All right. So this one right here is a 2014 uh, Ford Escape 1.6 liter EcoBoost. All right. But again, this issue affects just about every one of their four cylinder EcoBoost engines. So 1.5, 1.6, 2.0, 2.3, and so on. All right. So this one right here came to me about a year ago and he had about 55,000 miles on it. Came in, said he had a coolant leak and it set a code for low coolant level. This one is one of the early vehicles, 13 and 14s, that we added on the standpipe uh, on there. And I, I, I filled it and I pressure tested it last time about a year ago and I could not find no leaks anywhere. It was, it was low, like a gallon low on coolant in this little engine, all right? So major issue, right? So I, pressure, I filled it, pressurized it. You know, I checked the water pump on there. It's not a common area. These engines leak and everything was dry. Underneath, dry, everything's just dry. I went ahead because I know about the EcoBoost and their, their block issues and the leak issues and the coolant getting in this cylinder. So, you know, last time I was here, I went ahead and pulled all the plugs and I checked down the cylinders and nothing. So I told him it's probably the block. You're probably gonna need a long block. So either you put a long block in it or you monitor the coolant. Fast forward a year to now and this thing comes in on the hook the other day and it's got overheat codes in it. Uh, it's got overheat protection codes in it. And of course the coolant is empty like you see here. So this one, uh, it was bad enough where it ate up all the coolants in there. So what I did is I actually filled it. We kind of burped it a little bit, filled it, and then we pressure tested it. And you can see, I mean, the thing is empty already because there's so much, so much, so many air pockets inside that all that coolant got pushed down into those air pockets when I pressure tested the system. So again, I did the same thing as last time. Um, I pressure tested the system, filled it and pressure tested it. So I put it on, you know, 20, 21 PSI right at spec for this vehicle. These run real high pressure, uh, in these systems and you're supposed to, you know, pressure test it two hours minimum up to five hours. You know, it depends on the year and model Ford spec is all over the place. But for a situation like this, where you don't see any external leaks, and you're really, you know the history of these engines, and you know it's probably coming to that. You want to be sure uh, you need the long block or not. Well, I went ahead and pressure tested it and walked away, worked on other stuff since it's a drop off, and I let it sit overnight pressurized. All right. Just like it would if you're running on the road, nice and hot, pressurized, and you just shut it off and you walked away from it and it sat overnight. Okay. Same idea. So when it came in this time, he pulled codes on it and you can see here it only has 70,000 miles on it. That's the bad thing. These vehicles are pretty nice otherwise, but it's either, you know, like the Focus, the, the transmissions kill the car or on um, these other engines, the, it, it, these other models that are great. Otherwise, it's the engines and reliability issues. Look at that, 2014 with 70,000 miles on it and we're looking at a six to eight gram bill. The customer does not deserve that at all. Um, so let's go to some codes on here. So uh, these are permanent DTCs, uh, but there was continuous memory DTCs. When it first came in, my son pulled it in and started pulling stuff apart on it. He cleared codes on it on me. Uh, but it had a PO300, PO316, which is basically random misfires. Uh, and then it had a PO302 and, of course, a P1299, as you see here. Now, the P1299 will set when it gets low enough and the engine starts to actually overheat. And these engines are actually smart enough. They'll run a cylinder overhead protection uh, mode where they start pumping air in the cylinders, just make a, like a air compressor basically, and then they'll alternate it. So what they'll do is they'll 
take two cylinders, pump air, two cylinders, pump air, and keep jumping around. So the engine's gonna run horrible, but it's pumping air instead of firing off a fuel air mixture, thereby allowing it to kind of cool itself down so it doesn't do any permanent damage, you know? Uh, a lot of four cylinders have that. So the other thing uh, noteworthy here is a PO302. Again, these, these four cylinders, when they crack in the block and have issues, uh, it's usually between cylinders two and three. It's been an issue for years, but especially on these uh, EcoBoost engines. So of course now we have a permanent DTC of an identified cylinder two misfire. It's all coming together, right? So what I did, took that information and we went ahead and pulled the quills out and the spark plugs out, kept them in order so we can check the condition of the spark plugs. And then we started looking down in the cylinders and you're not gonna believe the amount of coolant in here. Real quick, because it is good information. Like I said, it's like a murder mystery when you're trying to figure these vehicles out for diagnostics. You wanna look at all these different pieces and put all the pieces of the puzzle together to form a conclusion on there. So these are in order, okay? Just this is cylinder one, so you can focus on it. There we go. So right there you see it's light tan all the way around, cylinder one. That is perfect. By comparison, this is cylinder two. See those like ashy grayish deposits on there? Yeah, it's burning something like coolant. See that? And then cylinders three. Nice light tan, absolutely perfect. And cylinder four. So which one of these is not like the other? Yeah, cylinder two. Another piece of the puzzle. Look at those deposits right there. It's definitely weird, it's definitely different. All right. So real quick, um, I'm gonna get my endoscope out so you guys can see. And we're gonna look down at each one of these cylinders and I'll show you how it looks. Uh, when it actually leaks down into there. Now the usual indicator, if you're not seeing any coolant immediately, the usual indicator, if you look down into a cylinder, is the cylinder that's burning coolant will be magically cleaner than the other cylinders. So it'll be nice and shiny and clean in there because it's basically steam cleaning it every time it fires in there with a coolant leak, you know? Um, whereas this one, this one's just pooling up in there. You won't believe it. So. I'll go ahead and get the endoscope out so we can look together down into the cylinders. I'll show you exactly what it looks like. All right, here we go. We're going to start off on cylinder number one. And these cylinders are a little bit weird to get into here. So looking at cylinder one, everything looks just fine inside of here. Not a lot of carbon, not a lot of anything going on in there. All right, we jump over to cylinder three. We'll keep number two for last. You can see these have oil leak issues too. Cylinder three, it basically looks fine too. For as far over as I can tell on here. Yeah, there you go. Not too bad, not too carboned. All right, cylinder four, You guessed it, it's gonna be basically the same way. Man, these are weird going down in here. Look at that, not too bad of carbon. Like I said, 70 some thousand miles, no big deal. So let's jump over to cylinder three, or cylinder two, cylinder two. And let's see if we find anything in here. Wow. So again, looking inside of here, you can see there's a lot of something in here. Well, it's, it's orange-ish looking, um, and that is the coolant, because this runs the oak coolant, the orange asset technology coolant. So you can see, yeah, it's pulling up in there. I'll try to get you a spin, give you a twirl. So you see how it cleans the piston top in there too? When you get a smaller doses, it'll actually steam clean inside of there. You see there's some carbon there, and it's kind of getting rid of it right there uh, as it steams it. That's about as far as I can go. But wow, I mean, look at all the coolant in there. 
That's a lot of coolant. So of course we pressure tested this and it's you know been pressure tested for five, six hours at least. Um, but wow, that's a lot. Yeah. So that is where it's all going. And that's why our bottle is empty. It's absolutely empty because it's getting all burned up by cylinder number two. What do you guys think? Uh, it's pretty crazy, right? I mean, that's a lot of coolant missing from the bottle and a lot of coolant down in the cylinder after a pressure test like that. I mean, that's why, you know, it's misfiring on cylinder number two. Uh, it's a little cleaner in there, a lot of fluid in there. And of course, we have the overheat protection going on because it's gobbling up so much coolant. Uh, it's emptying the bottle. I mean, we, we when it came in, we probably filled three quarters of a gallon to a gallon of coolant in there to start our pressure test. And as you saw, once you pressure tested it, you saw the bottle was empty because when you pressure test, it kind of fills those voids, those air pockets in the engine, and that's where it all went. So it probably needs another three quarters of a gallon at least, if maybe not a gallon. That's a lot in that little car to lose. So that's why the cylinder had uh, overheat protection mode came on and everything else. Uh, but it doesn't matter uh, because the, the block is the issue. And I feel really bad for a lot of you out there who own these vehicles and uh, because they're usually pretty decent vehicles otherwise. You know, these, these EcoBoost, these four-cylinder EcoBoost engines are in a lot of Ford models. And, you know, it's just like one of those things like, I don't know. And the 543 valves, they had the timing tick and this and that. Oh, we need to make bigger bearings or smaller oil holes. We need to do this and that. I understand. But this is pretty basic. This is a cylinder head bolted up to a block. And they could not get it right. And they've been, you know, building engines for how long now? Over a century? Uh, it's real basic stuff. When, they, when the basic stuff fails it makes me mad uh, because this affects a lot of vehicles just about all the four cylinder ecoboost engines out there from when they first started coming out uh, up until current day i would not trust them i would think that at some point in time they're going to have this issue on them because they just keep rolling them out with the same issue over and over again and there's been some recalls and extended warranties and stuff like that for certain models and years but it certainly doesn't cover them all and it doesn't cover this one uh, so this guy's looking at a six, $8,000 bill, and the vehicle has 70,000 miles on it now, and this started back at 50,000 miles or so on it. So it's, it's incredible. Um, it's a bad situation overall. And the fact that it's been going on for so long now with different vehicle models and lines, it has me scratch my head why it hasn't been fixed yet. These keep pumping them out, you know, and the, this, this engine, I mean, it's not even worth putting in this vehicle because it's just going to be over the cost of the, the current value of the vehicle, probably. Um, but it's up to them. You know, if they want to do it, I'll order it. I told them a year ago it probably needs a long block, and now it's gotten so bad we just confirmed it. But this is how they look. This is this is very, very, very common, unfortunately. Say we, what you guys want about the 543 valve, but it doesn't have base engine issues. It's got a timing set it needs. Oh, no. This one needs an engine. And it's a 14. And that's total BS that that's, that's happening, you know. That's why I say the 543 valve and all these other engines, they're, they're actually great compared to these other ones that are just like major design flaws and they're just junk. They're paperweights. You got to replace the whole thing. It gets very expensive real quick. Anyways, I hope this video was informative, but that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.